hey, welcome back to my channel. I've got a video today. Don't do a lot of those. Uh, so yeah, Star Trek Lower Decks Season 4 finished uh, about a week and a half ago now. Uh, and it was great. Uh, as I, was, I mean, the show just remains an absolute delight. Every, you know, every season, every episode is just uh, wonderful. Uh, this one was definitely a, a great season. A lot of uh, really good stuff. I liked that uh, it really went to explore sort of the cultures of some of the different species. Since like some of the like sort of under underused species. Um, so we got spotlight episodes on uh, the Beta Zeds. Um, an episode set on Ferenginar, sort of exploring Ferengi culture in a different way compared to how it's uh, done on how it was done on Deep Space Nine. You know that one obviously went very deep into Ferengi culture. This one was sort of more about the culture on Ferenginar itself on the Ferengi planet. Uh, more Orion stuff with uh, with Tendi and going back to her home and her family. Um, like I said, the Betazoid uh, Diplomat, uh, that was very fun. Uh, and then sort of showing little bits of sort of lower, lower decks characters on, of different species, so. Yeah, some of the under, yeah, some of the employee, uh, or some of the, uh, sort of, Under crewman on, you know, Romulan ship, a Klingon ship, an Orion ship, a Ferengi ship, a Cardassian ship, just sort of showing what the, uh, sort of playing a little bit with the cultures of uh, each of those, uh, each of those species, through lower deckers on those on those ships. Yeah, that was really fun stuff. And obviously, Cray, you know, I. Uh, all part of a subplot that built really well, really, really effectively throughout the season. Um, and it also continues to be a love letter to Star Trek as a franchise. Um, you know, first episode, just all about Voyager, uh, including a Tuvix situation. That was weird, but kind of funny. Um, that was really fun stuff. Uh, the episode with the second episode had a uh, An alien menagerie and that one as well had some really good uh, references to classic Star Trek stuff I believe it might have had uh... I'm pretty sure I saw a god from uh, the animated series it was based on like a uh, Quetzalcoatl I think <laughs> was, uh, yeah that was a pretty fun little uh, Easter egg that I caught. Uh, and yeah, you know, the whole season, the whole series, obviously, it's always just full of Easter eggs and references to various uh, Star Trek stuff, various Star Trek things, which are always a lot of fun. Uh, so yeah, another thing I do really like about uh, Lower Decks, while a lot of the episodes are one and done's. You know, they are standalone episodes that still sort of, you know, may have a subplot. You know, may have like a scene that contributes to a larger overall subplot and then 
you know, builds up towards that. There is also, you know, it does also still have that sense of progression. So here the, the characters finally get promoted from ensigns to uh, lieutenant junior grade, which is, you know, that changes things. And the way they react is changed. Um, yeah, you know, with uh, Mariner in particular, really freaking out about that promotion. And uh, really, you know, it leads to some really good storytelling with her. Which ends up tying back into, uh, which ends up, again, tying back into Star Trek Next, Star Trek Next Generation. Uh, the first duty. We get a reveal about Mariner's backstory that ties all the way back to that. Uh, which was really cool. Then, you know, there's a couple other bits and pieces here that sort of harken back to earlier Star Trek. Um, to Lynn is a really interesting addition. So this season, you know, we actually start getting a lot more of to Lynn this season than we did uh, in season three. She was barely present in season three. Here she is. She really is promoted to being part of the main cast. Uh, and she is a really good addition. She's... She brings something... She brings that straight man quality that the show... That the four of them didn't really have before. Like, they were all kind of wacky. Sometimes, you know, sometimes one would be sort of straight man to one of the others, something like that. But here she is the same man surrounded by crazy people which is a fun dynamic and allows the characters to bounce things off her in ways that we didn't really get to see them do with each other uh also leads to the amazing line uh by the transit of property i must uh by the transit of property i am vulcan as a motherfuck motherfucker <laughs> just you don't really expect to hear a Vulcan say Vulcan as a motherfucker which great moment and honestly like it's funny when Talyn first uh, was first uh, introduced onto the show a lot of people were sort of shipping her with Tendi. Yeah, a lot of people were like, ooh, Tendi and Talyn as a couple? And now it's and now everybody's like, never mind, Talyn and Mariner as a couple. Now that Mariner is broken up with Jennifer, now that they're no longer a couple, apparently. Uh, yeah, a lot of people think Mariner and Talyn would really work as a couple. And they do have really good chemistry together. They just play off each other so well. Because they're both competent. They're both good at what they do. It's just... Mariner's sarcastic and reckless, and Talyn is a Vulcan. But, like, she's... She's not a great... Vul like, she's not... She's a Vulcan who's more willing to listen to her instincts than other Vulcans are. And yeah, she's just a, she's a really good character. I really like Talyn. She's very compelling. She's not emotional, but she is... more inclined to... trust her instincts a little bit more... Yeah, a little bit more reckless than the right regular Vulcan might be, than the normal Vulcan might be. She's different from normal Vulcans in a really in a way that's really interesting to see. She is a very different Vulcan from what we've ever seen before on the show, on Star Trek, and I appreciate that. I appreciate seeing 
seeing aliens, like seeing members that don't match the stereotypes of their species. Um, I loved the running gag of the uh, of twaining as a means of conflict resolution. <laughs> By which I mean uh, two people, both uh, two people in the holodeck, both uh, dressed up as Mark Twain and trying to emulate Mark Twain's manner of speech. <laughs> Just. <laughs> it's just a weird little running gag that got thrown in. I love. Why does this work? Uh, See, so yeah, the show is also still hilarious. It is a hilarious show. Love the Moopsie. Everyone loves Moopsie. Just phenomenal little addition. Just amazing. Uh, Moopsie absolutely took uh, the Trekkie world by storm. Like as soon as that episode aired, everyone was like obsessed with with it, and it is such a great little thing. Moopsie, it's just the best joke. Um. The Betazoid episode was definitely uh, one of the highlights for me, I think. Um, trio of... A trio of logs on a Troy's, basically. Just... A bunch of... Trio of drunk Betazads with... Just partying and having no real sense of uh, personal boundaries was uh, a lot of fun, including the one hitting on, uh, on the captain, on Captain Freeman. One of, one of them even hitting on Captain Freeman was uh, amusing as well. And also some really good uh, throwbacks to other stuff as well, so. Um, to, to earlier seasons of the show. So the return of both, uh, the return of Badgy, Peanut Hamter, and Agamus, all in the same episode. And, yep, treating AI as not being a crapshoot. I always appreciate when sci-fi is like AI, when sci-fi says treats AI as not being inherently bad or evil. The, you know, Sentient AIs can be pretty good sometimes. Um, the caves episode was uh, really good. Again, sort of poking fun at the way that caves in Star Trek do tend to look pretty similar in ways that don't really fit what real world caves are like. And hey, then the uh, the finale uh, was really good. A uh, really cool use of um, an existing character. Someone that, you know, no spoilers, but I think it's a character that I think a lot of people have long wondered about what may have happened to them. And uh, it was a really good way of handling, you know, really, you know, really cool way of bringing the character in. Um, and then the uh, the end of that episode does set up a uh, sort of very curious to see how season five will be handled 
I'm you know very much hoping that there is a season five. Uh, it definitely deserves it. Because uh, it is, a, it's a, just a great show. So I really hope that they do get uh, a fifth season. Like I've got no complaints about this season. <laughs> like I've got no, I've got no complaints. Yeah, you know, the last season of uh, Strange New World, season two of Strange New Worlds. You know, had a lot of stuff that I loved, had some stuff that I didn't so much love. So that one was a long video because there was stuff that, you know, I had criticisms about, I had complaints about. This one, I got nothing. Everyone was great. All the, like, the whole series was great. Every episode was great. You can tell that everyone involved is having an absolutely the best time making the show. Um... They have really weird uh, senses of humor. And, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's just really good stuff. I do really, really hope that uh, they get to keep making it for as long as they want to. They've said that they have plans for seven seasons. You know, like... That sort of, like, the stuff that they've been doing throughout, that's... Sort of what they seem to be hoping for is seven seasons. But, honestly, they could do, like, they could do like 20 seasons and I'd be sad. I'd, I'd be happy. I mean, there's what, 14? I think there's like 14 Star Trek movies. That means 14 Star Trek movie posters to parody. Right? Give them 14 seasons. Uh, anyway, yeah. I is I is, I love Star Trek uh, Lower Decks. It's just always delightful. Made by people who love Star Trek, but like are also able to know when to do something different. Uh, like they like they love Star Trek, but they also know the value of not just retelling existing Star Trek stories. Um, you know, it's very referential, but it's also... They also know... They do it in a way that's not... That doesn't detract from it. It's referential on a show that doesn't really detract... In a way that doesn't really detract from the show. You know, sometimes Star Trek can just be, get a little bit too up its own history. Especially with modern Star Treks, they can be, you know, they can rely a little bit too much on, hey, remember this thing? Again, Star, uh, Star Trek Picard was entirely built on, hey, remember this? Hey, do you remember that? And that include and that includes season three. I know everybody loves season three, but season three of Star of Picard was just entirely self was entirely self referential. It was entirely hey remember this and start in next generation hey remember that. Remember when. Remember how you, how much you loved this show grow, growing up. Remember how much you loved next generation as a kid. This show does a lot of references, but it's not just, hey, remember, remember this thing. It, or it's not entirely built on, it's not entirely built on being referential. You know, like Peanut Hamper, Peanut Hamper, for example. You know, the exocoms do come from Next Generation. Uh, but, I mean, she is treated as her own character. She's not just there as... A reference to 
next generation. She's not just, you know, hey, here's the here's one of the exocomps from the next generation. She is treated as a unique individual. With her own personality and and all that. So yeah, it's it makes it more interesting than what Picard would have done, because like something like Star Trek Picard, it just would have taken one of the ex exocomps from uh, from that episode, from the episode where they were introduced, and honestly, probably not even given it a personality. Probably just would have had it still be just you know. Just a tool, basically. They just they wouldn't have done anything interesting with it. Here, yeah, they're like, hey, the exocomps are an interesting concept. Let's do something with them. And like the uh... the Voyager episode is is pretty self referent is pretty referential. That one is is pretty much just. <laughs> that one is kind of like, man, Star Trek Voyager was so good. I love Star Trek Voyager. That was that like that episode was just basically them just like really gushing over Voyager. But yeah, it's fine. Voyager doesn't get a lot of love, so I will allow it. Um, anyway, yeah. So, uh, so what is the next? Not sure what the next uh, Star Trek will be. I assume probably next season. I think season five of... Uh, yeah, I think the next Star Trek season will be season five of Discovery. Does that one have a uh, release date yet? Early 2024, so no set release date yet for uh, next season of Discovery. But I'm pretty sure that is the uh, the next. The next bit of Star Trek that we will be getting. Fifth and final season of Discovery. Actually, speaking of lower decks, one of those episodes I think was like, I think one episode was a sort of a milestone for the franchise, but I don't remember what the uh, details were. Whatever. Uh, so yeah. Those are my thoughts on Lower Deck Season 4. I definitely recommend watching the show. So, thanks for watching me, and I'll see you in another video. Live long and prosper, and Lower Decks, Lower Decks.